dogs should be able to win Oscars. I don't mean fun awards that you give out at home, like a Best Playing Dead, Worst Scream, Most Hungriest Boy I've Ever Seen. I mean there should be an Academy Award for Best Dog Actor. Every year during award season, there's a conversation about recognising wider achievements in the film industries. For instance, in 2020, the BAFTAs added Best Casting, an essential part of filmmaking that until now has been completely unsung. And the debate rages on about adding a Best Stunts category, of course, and arguably that's increasingly important, considering that all the big movies now are going back to being quite stunt-heavy after years of CGI. These additions make total sense. And yet, you never hear anyone calling for a dog Oscar. And I'm here to tell you why we need one. So why do we give awards to anything? I think there are three key elements that we need if we're going to recognise a new field of filmmaking. First, we have to be able to agree on what's good practice in that field and what isn't good. We don't have to agree all the details, there just needs to be a rough consensus. Secondly, there needs to be some kind of precedent for the award, some history in the field for us to base our judgments off, otherwise we'll just be giving it to every new piece of technology that comes out. And if we're talking about an individual practitioner, of course a prior career makes it easier to judge their newest work. And finally, the element has to contribute identifiably to the success of the film in some way. Now I genuinely think dog actors hit all of these points, and here's why. Oh, and if you're interested in whether cats should get Oscars, no, of course they shouldn't. And I think you know why. What is a good dog actor? Film sets are incredibly loud, busy, and often dangerous places to be. All that stimulation makes it difficult for anyone to focus in and just pretend to be someone else for a little bit. So if a dog actor looks at the camera, that's bad acting. Sorry, little terrier in The Woman in Black. I don't care if your handler is holding a treat off camera, it's unprofessional. And conversely, dogs who can properly inhabit their roles, just as we'd expect with a human, and pretend that they're some other dog, are good dog actors. Take a look at this clip of Jed, the main dog in the opening act of The Thing. I think we can all agree that Jed is an incredibly good boy who can walk through the whole scene without looking at his handler once, and in fact that definitely helps his performance. If you haven't seen the film, here he's playing this kind of shape-shifting alien, and in this scene, his physicality makes him seem like a threatening, uncanny intruder. Good job, Jed. Good boy. Dogs have pretty much been in movies as long as humans have been, and just like good human actors, dog actors often have long careers. Take Mooney, for instance, who featured in both of the Legally Blonde films as Bruiser, or his sibling Gidget, who appeared in the iconic Taco Bell commercials. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Good job, Gidget. Good girl. Plus, it's important to note that the Academy Awards wouldn't even be the first body to award dogs. The long-running Palm de Og, which is given out unofficially at the famous Cannes Film Festival each year, celebrates the work of animal actors featuring in that year's film program. Now, this leads to some truly wild matchups, like the dog Doug from Up versus the talking fox from the film Antichrist. Doug won, by the way, so good job, Doug. Good boy. Now, dogs aren't just set dressing. They contribute in identifiable ways to the success of the film that they feature in. Okay, so you, you normally won't have a dog named on the poster, they won't be top billed but many films rely on animal performances to work. Sometimes this is just individual scenes, like the scrappy little dog in one of the most iconic scenes of The Silence of the Lambs. And this is kind of a deep cut, but I'm actually very fond of this golden retriever from one scene in the Paul Rudd Lake Bell movie, Over Her Dead Body. And just like that example, it's more common that dogs form part of the comic relief for a movie, where their silent reactions can provide critical counterpoints to any drama going on. In some cases, the plot may actually revolve around the dogs, or at least be started off by it, like the Brussels griffon Videl in As Good As It Gets. And the dogs might even, in that case, get title billing, like in Spanish indie film Bonbon El Perro. In the early years of cinema, dogs carried whole franchises, like Rin Tin Tin, who appeared in 24 silent films. There's even an unlikely but very funny Hollywood urban legend that he actually won the most votes for the Best Actor Oscar in the first Oscars. It's not true, but it should have been, because dogs deserve Oscars. Now you're starting to get it. 
Hello and welcome to Actors on Acting, where we talk about the most important thing in the world, pretending to be other people. I'm joined by friend and colleague Max the Pug to discuss his work on three short films, Good Boy, Ghost Pug and Citizen of Nowhere. Now, based on these performances, we'll be deciding if Max really deserves a Best Dog Actor Oscar. Michael, can you roll clip one? Thank you. I mean, what do you want? Do you want your teddy? Do you want your little teddy to play with? Do you want your weird bone thing? I'll just pop that on the floor for you, yeah? Now, Max, your performance in Good Boy was praised by, amongst others, programming group Anos Amours, which includes famous film director Joanna Hogg. What I like about this is I think you really show here that acting is reacting, you know? Unfortunately, they didn't realise that the extent of Max's reactions are just looking off screen for treats. Isn't that right? Next clip, please, Michael. <gasps> oh, look at his little ghost paw. Look at his tiny ghost belly. Oh, why are you here, ghost pug? What's your unfinished business? So in this role, Max, you had to do a lot of effects work, and some will say that you were actually asleep right up until uh, the director of the film, uh, Will Webb, put you on a green screen um, to make it look like you were floating around. Do you have anything to say about that, that unprofessional behaviour that you exhibited? Okay, no comment on that one. Now, Max, I feel that Citizen of Nowhere is your best acting, uh, but it is a tiny, tiny role for a tiny, tiny boy. It's more like a cameo, isn't it? I mean, um, I think the improv that you show and that interaction with the bus driver is really playful, but ultimately there just isn't enough work there to really judge your performance. Okay, so looking back at those clips, I think we have enough information to judge this, and I'm sorry to say, Max, that I don't think you deserve a Best Dog Actor Oscar, although I think you are a really good boy. Any projects to plug? Anything to wrap up with? Can't even speak English. Could only get nominated for Best Foreign Language Picture. Am I right? Am I right? So there you have it. Dogs should be able to win Oscars, and I'm sick of pretending otherwise. And if you follow the argument, you'll notice that we can actually apply these rules to many disciplines, with maybe some slightly more important outcomes, including adding awards for stunt work and motion capture performances. But don't lose sight of the for sure most important takeaway from this video. Dogs need Academy Awards, and they need them now.